a three-hour tour. The sitcom Gilligan's Island ran 98 episodes between 1964 and 1967, and later spawned three movies that aired between 1978 and 1982. The premise is simple. A two-man crew of the boat the SS Minnow and its five passengers went out for a tour that was supposed to last just three hours, but a tropical storm sent the boat off course and it later became shipwrecked on an island. It's like the show Lost, except a boat and not a plane, and less smoke monsters. The ensemble of characters included Gilligan, the inept foil, the skipper, who tended to be a dim-witted leader, as well as a couple of millionaires, a movie star, a professor, and a farm girl from Kansas. This recipe, and I'm talking the characters and the premise, made for a sure-to-succeed sitcom stew, but a video game? Why would Bandai decide that Gilligan's Island was the source material they wanted, especially so many years later? Why no Brady Bunch game while you're at it, or Perry Mason? Next you'll tell me there was a Three Stooges game. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Anyway, what's up with Gilligan's Island on the NES? The game plays out in four episodes or stages. The backstory is the same as the show, so that's nice. Same characters, same island, same predicament. To boil the game down to its basic structure, it's a series of fetch quests lightly spread over an elongated escort mission. That's to say, it incorporates all of the modern cardinal sins of game filler into one. Despite it being Gilligan's Island, you play as the skipper, and Gilligan haplessly follows you along. You can't do anything without Gilligan at your side. If you encounter another stranded island mate, you can't initiate a conversation with them until you either go back to the previous screen and try to get Gilligan to follow you again, which usually is just you touching him, or if you've picked up rope, using the rope will bring him right to you. You get used to it, but it is annoying to have to wait up for Gilligan to be nearby before you exit the screen each time, or being mindful that he could fall into a hole if you don't lead him past it a little. Gilligan only serves as a foil anyway. He doesn't help in boss battles or offering any clues. He just stands there. The only thing he will do for you is climb trees in missions that require it. And sometimes he'll climb trees when the mission doesn't require it. Each of the four episodes is a series of gopher quests that typically involve seeking out another cast member and talking to them. You get a map to refer to, and it is helpful. When you locate someone, they become marked permanently on the map. You have to do things in the right order though. If you do something out of order, the game sometimes won't let you complete the quest. It happened to me a couple times. The major motivator of the game is the time limit. You must get around the map and complete everyone's request as the clock continually ticks away, although you can pick up extra time as you go. If you get too far from Gilligan, the clock immediately jumps down to two minutes, so the pressure is on. I sometimes found that if I had rope handy, I'd ditch Gilligan and get around as just the skipper much easier and then use the rope before the clock ran out to get my original time back. Pro tip. The first three episodes aren't too bad to figure out, but the last episode, and I guess technically the last two, can get really messy with the map. A big element of traversal down in the caves is to be carried away by either quicksand or water to other parts of the map, and these are points of no return, so if you go in the wrong direction, it's a long way back around before you can try a different path, and the clock is ticking. The combat in the game is, well, bad. I clubbed this gorilla over the head about 30 times before I realized that if I had just left it alone, it was going to walk over to the side of the screen to give up. There's no life bar on the enemy, so how was I supposed to know? Every time he got up, I thought he was going to eat me, and I just hit him again. He's a giant gorilla after all. <sighs> I still think about that gorilla sometimes. Sorry about all that. There's a lot to complain about here. It's an elongated escort mission without the option of two players, which could have helped this out a little bit, made it easier to swallow. It controls okay overall, I had no real issues with hit detection, except for when it mattered against bosses, then it seemed to be futile at best. The series of fetch quests, already a boring concept, become trite quickly. Especially in the last episode, you end up going back and forth between two characters who are separated by a number of pitfalls and obstacles several times. The same two characters in the same locations, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Speaking of characters, Ginger is oddly missing from the game, but the rest are here. The theme song is here though, it's recognizable, and sounds decent actually. I dig it. 
In the game, the sound design is, well, not as good. There have been no other Gilligan's Island video games, although there is a Gilligan's Island pinball machine that came out in 1991, a year after the NES game. I guess that wraps up the adventures of Gilligan's Island on the NES. Check the weather before you go out on a boat tour, and thanks for watching.